Hey, do you have a least favorite workout of all the workouts you do? I think since high school, since middle school, even my least favorite workout. It's on the track, which is like my favorite place in the world, but my least favorite workout was 300 meter repeats. That's like, you know, three quarters away around the track, but you don't get to really cross the finish line. You can see the finish line, but you, then you gotta stop 100 yards before you get to it. And so I hate 300 meter repeats. And that's what I did today. And it made me think about, this is kind of like where we're at in so many ways where there's this new phenomenon called quiet quitting. Like, you're not really quitting your job or quitting your relationship or quitting whatever that thing is that you, you kind of have to do. Um, but you're just gonna not give it your best. It's kind of like, I'm kind of gonna get close, but not quite, you know, finish it or not completely do the best that I could do. When we see this in the church, we live the exact opposite of what the Apostle Paul wrote in his last final letter. He writes to his, his young protege, Timothy. In his final chapters, he's writing about how he's, he's run the good race. He's fought the good fight. He says, like, my life is like a, a drink offering poured out for the Lord. And so Paul knows what it's like to... It's no high step and no showboating when you come to the finish line. It's, it's head down. It's gut check. Keep going. Do not quit. You're too legit to quit, to quote the great theologian MC Hammer. So I want to give a shout out to all the hard-nosed coaches who have pushed their athletes. It's, it's fourth quarter. It's home stretch. Keep going. Keep going. Now, you don't have to be a coach to shout that out to the people that are around you. Encourage someone because they're thinking about quitting right now because it's got really, really hard. And maybe there's not as many people cheering each other on anymore. Seems like we're just tearing each other down or we're, we're too afraid to be seen as fanatical or something. But let you know, I'm absolutely a fanatic about Jesus Christ. I love Jesus. He took it to the very end. He took it to the cross. And from the cross, he said the most powerful words for any of us to hear. It is finished. Like the work that God gave him to do. Can you imagine if Jesus just did like three quarters of the work? And that's even what he was praying about in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's crying out before he was arrested and betrayed and crucified. He's saying, Father, if there's any other way, any other way that we can rescue humanity, any other way to, to bridge this chasm caused by sin, if there's any other way to redeem them, I'm all ears. But Father in heaven was silent. There was no other way. Christ had to go to the cross. But from the cross, he said, it is finished. The work of redemption was finished. And the beauty is, though, that wasn't the end of Jesus, right? Because we celebrate on Easter Sunday every year. And every Sunday, really, the Lord's Day, is when Christ rolled away his own tombstone. It says, death's not the end. That's not what was finished. But the, the work done for us to be with Jesus, that was finished. So... Don't leave it hanging on your end. Trust him, run to him, run with him. Don't run like till you can see the finish line, run all the way through the finish line. Don't stop when you see the finish line. Stop when you cross the finish line. Whew.